Hey everybody, welcome back to LiveSciFi.tv. I'm your host, Tim Wood, and thank you for joining us for Black Thursdays. Now, I hope you guys all enjoyed the last show. It was our first show. Um, and we have a very special guest uh, joining us tonight, Kristen Manning, who... Hi there. Oh, she's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hi, LiveSciFi family. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, Kristen, why don't you tell everybody what you do? Because uh, you've been have some amazing sketches, and you're an amazing artist. And uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, um, I like to say I was kind of born with a paintbrush in my hand, um, but I was also born with, I guess, I would call it a gift uh, that I could see spirit, and um, so as a child, you know, that was very interesting because I didn't know what I was seeing at the time. Um, born in the Bible Belt, so my family, being very religious, was not open at all um, to, uh, can you see me? I mean, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I'm sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah we computer's can... lagging, so just a second. Um, they weren't open at all to, you know, the idea that their little girl would walk up and say, so who's the guy in the basement? Um, so I learned to kind of keep that to myself mm -hmm. and um, uh, ignore it, really, until uh, I was much older and uh, in college uh, started to sketch what I would see or paint what I would see. Um, people would ask. You know, what is that? Uh, and uh, normally I didn't tell them because it just wasn't very welcomed mm -hmm. uh, where I grew up. So um, until my son was born and I realized he had the same gift, I, that is when I really started to search for validation for the things that I saw. Because, you know, it's easy to say you see something and to draw it. Um, but when no one else can see it, how do you, how do you know that you're really, you know, not nuts or that you're seeing what you're seeing. So mm -hmm. um, that's when I started seeking things out, started doing uh, internet searches, um, started looking into different uh, places that I could maybe test my ability or um, test my what I saw. And that is how I met you, was through uh, the Sally House, looking for different kinds of validation, and uh, I decided since I live in Kansas, I wanted to go to the Sally House and discovered you and uh, was very happy that you were open to seeing what I had seen, and, and I was doubly interested to see if what I saw was anything remotely like what you had captured or seen. Now, now, Kristen, let me back up for a little bit here. When you sure. were, were growing up and you saw these these things that other people couldn't see or experience, yeah. um, you know, ghosts and stuff, um, right. did you find that as you repressed, I, I'm sure that the artwork was kind of an outlet for you to... Absolutely. Uh, to you know, since other people around you didn't um, believe, but as, you know, time passed, did you ever um, feel, was there ever a time at your, in your life where you were, um, where you felt, where you stopped drawing these things and you stopped experiencing them or were, have you just always seen them? And, I've always, yeah, yeah, it's always been there. 
Um, I, I got very good at blocking it uh, when, I, when I didn't want to experience it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and that was just something that, that I think came naturally with kind of the repression that you were mentioning, you know, with everyone around me uninterested and really quite fearful of, of you know, me pointing something out or saying, gosh, I saw this and it freaked me out or right. drawing something and have your art teacher say, are you abused? What is that? You know, mm-hmm. um, and, and uh, trying to come up with an explanation so that they don't think I'm crazy, but that you know I do see these things um, from the artwork that you just showed. You can tell, like I draw what I see. So yeah. you know, whether it's a portrait or a landscape um, or the two kids I saw under the bed as a child or the dark shadow that would follow me, um, it's how I see it. And so uh, it's literal translation from what I see to what I'm putting on paper. Now, do do you still see any of these uh, spirits that have followed you or that were following you as a child? At times, the the one that um, is in the, that was with the dark shadow that you had shown, Mm -hmm. uh, that one shows up. Um, and it would seem to most to be a negative uh, spirit or entity because it's black. Right. But um, I, I have seen that more as a protector. At times I see it when, when um, I need help or I need protection. It's just kind of like there in the room or in the corner. It will come and go. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that you're showing uh, with the... Uh, girl sitting down with uh, rain on her. That was guardian that I've seen. I, ca- I call her an angel or a guardian. I'm not sure which, but um, she was uh, with us on a trip through a really horrendous tornado thunderstorm. Mm. Um, and uh, she was there and then she was gone. Hmm. So um, things come and go. I have a lot of what I call transients that will come through, come through the house, or when I visit my daughter in New York City, you know, it's like people lining up because I'm the new bright light in the neighborhood, Mm. Uh, and so, you know, there will be people that come through, and and, um, it takes a lot of energy to to, to just kind of ignore what I need to ignore, Um, but over the years, you know, I've gotten better at it. So uh, it doesn't make me feel as out of sorts as it used to. Right, so, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, for a lot of people that don't, don't know me too well, uh, it's pretty strange for me to have or meet people that I don't know when I'm out on investigations. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time that I met Kristen, we were actually at the Sally house, like she said earlier. And... Um, she was sending me artwork when we were over there and I was pretty amazed because there were some things that I didn't say on the stream that I had experienced and things that I had saw that um, were showing up in her artwork. So um, we, yeah, yeah, I invited you down there and you showed your your sketchbook and that was the first time, and this is like before Dead Files and you know, the the, the show. So it was the first time where I'd actually seen someone draw a spirit before. So, um, yeah, maybe we can kind of talk about the first uh, one that you showed me. Um, It was the one with, uh, I think it was the uh, the crazy looking, I don't know, it's like the one with the the crazy hair. You'd called it the bees, um, yes. you know, and what's really strange is something that I had never told you is that uh, years ago, uh, people had told me that I had um, a kind of a crazy woman following me around. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so when I, you showed this to me, it kind of struck a chord with me. It was like, whoa, you know, this is kind of like some, some of the... Uh, 
other uh, intuitives have told me that this thing looks like. So it, it, right. it, it was kind of cool. So how did you, uh, where did you see this, uh, Kristen? Well, um, I was watching your videos that you had and then uh, your live, some of your live shows. And um, I had seen her um, whenever you were doing uh, Spirit Box, whenever you were um, talking and getting responses from uh, Belizebub or Beezlebub, however you say that, mm -hmm. I would see her first. And um, it was like she came prior to um, whatever the entity was that was calling himself uh, Beezlebub. And I, so I wasn't clear on whether she was with him or with you. Uh, but she always came prior to um, to that interaction that you would be having uh, with whatever that entity is. And uh, I know when I showed you the picture, the look on your face, you know, it made me happy and uh, and surprised all at the same time because um, I knew it meant something to you even though you hadn't said anything. Right. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It was kind of, it was kind of freaky because I had had a dream with a woman that looked like that years ago, yeah. but yeah, that had creeped me out. And then I remember as you were sitting down on the couch at the Sally house, um, Patrick was there, and um, I think Jonathan was there. You flip yeah. to the next page, and that uh, page is kind of like a, like a dog-like creature that I. Had seen in the basement of the Sally house that had red eyes right and um, that was cool um, I'm not sure when, when I know you drew that was it before the Sally house or during the Sally house it was during um, one of your Sally house investigations when you were upstairs um, you'd gone upstairs to lie down and I think the middle bedroom was empty at that time right and uh, you had laid down there and and you were like, you know, come on, whatever, and, and come and talk to me or touch me. And, and there was um, audio. You could hear something coming towards you from the hallway. Right. And as, as I'm watching it, I see this thing blink in around you. And, I, you know, I'm on the other end going, get out of there, you know. Yeah. Um, and sketching furiously. Um, and uh, it touched you, and you jumped up, and... Um, that was the first time that I saw it. The second time I saw it was in the basement with you when you were doing uh, part of your investigation down there. I could, every now and then I would see like the tail kind of come around the AC unit down there. And, and um, when you invited me out there, the, one of the first things you said was, you know, go on a tour of the house. and. And uh, I thought, I, was, I don't want to look like a scaredy cat, so of course <laughs> I'm going to go to the basement by myself. And um, I went down there, and I saw the red eyes uh, in that hole in the back. And I knew exactly what it was, so I didn't stay down there too long. But, um, yeah, that one was yep. a scary dude, whatever he is. Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy. And like the next photo we have is of the uh, the lady on the on the staircase. Uh, well, it's like a side by side. But what's really cool about that is um, on the on the actual photo, you can actually see the uh, the dark mist blocking out the top of the door frame, and right. it's actually um, you know a shadow like figure um, that's. Uh, actually goes underneath, so it's uh, it's pretty cool. And then you know your photo on the right is your yeah. interpretation of the of that um, spirit or that demon like you know f figure. Now, Kristen, when you sketch, um, I assume you have like a photographic memory because there's no way that you can <laughs> you can you can draw like that quick or sketch that quick. So how long do these images stay in your head? From once you see them to, you know. Once I get them, yeah. 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 Well, um, when I'm, when you're doing a, like a live investigation or I'm watching a, um, one of the videos or somebody's investigation for the first time, um, I've got the sketchbook there and my pencils and I'm 
kind of furiously sketching what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. um, taking as much notation as I can. And then what I'll do is, once that's done, as far as, you know, I'm not looking at an investigation anymore or I've left the location, then I'll try to get back to it pretty immediately so that I don't lose any detail mm -hmm. uh, that I have um, in my memory. There's a lot of times that uh, I'll struggle with, you know, as an artist, the art side of me wants to second guess or possibly change or, you know, rethink the way something looks. And I have to keep continually remind myself that, you know, no, no matter how strange it looks or crazy it looks, I need to only put down what I actually see. And, yeah. Yeah. um, that's why the validation was so important to me because, you know, when I went back through your videotapes and I, and I was doing screenshots and had seen uh, the picture of the woman at the top of the stairs, you know, those are the things that, that remind me, yes, yeah, just, just draw what you see. You know, you know, don't censor it at all. Now, you're, um, you, now just, just to let people know, you're actually, is it easier for you to be on at a location and seeing the stuff, or is it just as easy for you being at home and picking up stuff remotely, either from um, a video cast, or is it, it is it any easier for you to be there? Um, I wouldn't say one is easier than the other. They're, uh, they're different simply because if I'm on location, um, I'm, you know, I'm walking around with the notepad and paper as opposed to sitting stationary. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm at home and I'm able to view a video or an investigation, it's generally the first time that I see the video or the investigation that I get the most information. Like, I can't rewind it and rewatch the spirit. Right. Right. I know... Um you were on location at Virginia City, and in, before we went out there, I didn't tell you that I, was, I had bought that Raggedy Ann doll at the uh, antique shop in, um, I think it was Carson City, which Carson City, for those that don't know, is a town just down the, the hill mining town that was um, really, really, uh, it was like the big, one of the largest silver and uh, gold mining towns this time out there, and that's where I had met Kristen for the second time. Yeah. And so before, uh, actually, I think it was like right after you, we were there, you, you said... Yeah, you know, right at the end also. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, go to, I, I go antique shopping a lot, and sometimes I find some weird Raggedy Ann doll. I was kind of, you know, a little bit shocked because, uh, you know, <laughs> do, do, you, do, you, do you pick up things, uh, you know, when you sketch or do you pick up energies um, from the future as well? Um, I do get premonitions, and I get, um, yeah, I, I get information. Uh, sometimes it's information I don't want. Mm -hmm. um, as in, uh, I got the date of my father's death that was impending a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you do with that information? <laughs> right. You know, um, so I, I will get things um, if people are sick. Um, I've, you know, I get information like that, and, again, it's, it's always kind of a bit of a struggle, you know, what do you do with that information? Mm -hmm. You know, why do I have it and what should I do with it? Um, so that's something that I've had all my life as well. And uh, I just have had to learn to, you know, when it's appropriate to say something and when it's not. Because not everyone is open to knowing what you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I know... Um you also drew some faces when you were out there and some other uh, pictures. Yes. Of, uh, yeah. So we, you saw that face at the Washoe, if I'm not mistaken? The, uh, my computer's lagging. Is it the man's uh, face? Or yeah, it's kind of like the man's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, face. Yeah, he actually came to my house first. And uh, it was about two days before I was to fly out to Nevada. And... Um, having trouble sleeping and literally he 
his face or that, you know, what I saw, that full, like, white face just shot at me. I'm normally not surprised or scared. You know, it's been enough years that I kind of expect something surprising to show up. Mm -hmm. But that one startled me a lot. Right. I was like, what in the heck was that? It was there and it was gone. So I immediately put it down on paper. And, um, and then uh, the next day started searching the Internet for anything or any photographic evidence that there might be out there of the Washoe or St. Mary's to see if I could validate what I'd seen. And that's when I found um, a similar photo. Mm-hmm. So it, it made me a bit nervous to go into the wash show, to say the least. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you handled it pretty well when we were out there. You know, there uh, we stayed at the uh, St. Mary's uh, Hostel, and it was kind of cool. Uh, I think it was the first night that uh, we were there. Uh, we were walking around. Uh, I think the, uh, we were more the uh, key the uh, manager was giving us a tour of the place and it was kind of cool. I remember one, um, one time we were in, uh, I guess where they used to keep the, the, uh, stage coaches. And, um, I remember walking in there and, um, I, I had, I, I'm not the most psychic person, whatever, but it was strange. I looked in this room that was completely empty and I saw a bunch of people uh, in gurneys laying down. And it was strange yeah. because um, I thought, I swore I saw a nurse who I thought was actually living. I thought, oh, that's strange. Like, you know, um, why is she, you know, is there like a costume contest going on or something? <laughs> like, it was just so strange. And for me, at least, sometimes when I do see stuff, it, uh, it becomes very imprinted and very um, photographic to me. So I'm able to 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 uh to tell somebody what i saw and at the end right. of the room uh on the opposite side of the room i saw this person that was i uh, looked like he had an infection or something like that uh, like chicken pox um and it was kind of cool because i asked uh Kristen, i just kind of told her what i saw and you were able to actually sketch it it was you know very cool and then other gurneys i remember uh, instead of seeing actual people laying down, it was like they were all filled with like um, like layered with black smoke. Um, okay. So that, it was kind of interesting. And we later found out that that room was actually used as a um, what do you call it? A uh, what's the word I'm looking uh, for? Uh, well, it's like a like a hospital. Like a makeshift, a, like a makeshift hospital. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, so there was... For um, or for people you want to quarantine. Exactly. So they put the, the patients down in that room. And what was cool is later that night, we did a uh, ghost box session and in that same room. And we had asked for uh, that guy that you can see in that picture, the one that's um, very clear, if he could tell us who his doctor was. And the ghost box said... A name which was of a first and last name which was um, the doctor's name that served during um, that time you know when, right. um, when the, that room was used for that so that was really cool yeah yeah so you can Television yeah it's, rocks. yeah it's, <laughs> that's a cool place so um, yeah and oh, I mean there's just so many sketches here I know um, I mean you've done a lot more than this but we're just kind of picking picking some here but the next ones that I was really amazed at were the ones that you did of the Wells House. So That's I know the quite a place. yeah, it's a pretty crazy place. So the first uh, sketch we're looking at, there's three figures here, and do you want to describe how you how you got those? Yeah. Um, uh, that came on at the very beginning of your month long investigation, and um, I was getting uh, yeah, I was watching the feed when you were asleep and when you were awake and, you know, just, just really kind of trying to immerse myself in what is there. And so uh, the man with the top hat I saw several times um, there and the old woman with the kind of stringy hair. I wasn't sure if that was a residual thing that I was seeing, if they were actual entities that I was seeing. 
um, the man. I felt a very um, uh, religious quality to him, that he was either some kind of a leader or, a, you know, like a past um, a minister or something. Um, the, the entity in the middle, that kind of slimy thing, um, he, I saw a lot, kind of all over the house, but he also then uh, appeared in my backyard several times. Um, and and I, as your investigation wore on, it became kind of more clear to me that I really think he's probably, you know, more responsible for the first two that I saw as opposed to those two are actual spirits in the Wells house. Um, I think they may have been there at one time or they may have lived there at one time or they may be forms that he takes. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what those three are. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because, uh, I mean, there was a lot. I, I, w I didn't really have that much contact with um, anybody, you know, but those, yeah. you know, some of the things that those, actually the three that you had drawn, those were, I mean, we actually saw those um, in the back. There was one time where um, one of the other investigators and I were in the back and we actually saw um, a shadow figure that looked exactly like the, the, the man on, all the way on the left. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, you know, cool. Yeah. Um, the next one is uh, of another investigator who was uh, holding a ghost box. And, um, you know, I, that, I mean, I, I believe it to be like a demonic entity. I mean, you know, in, in the house. Sure, that's the feeling I get 100%. It's, um, uh, during that particular uh, part of the investigation, uh, all I could hear and see was this thing screaming, you know, at the investigator at the end. And uh, uh, I was sketching furiously once again, and, and later she stated, um, I just minutes after that part of the investigation was done, she said, you know, I felt like somebody was screaming at me the whole time, and I thought, because somebody was, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was the first time that I that I saw him more clearly as well, or it, whatever you want to call it. Um, right. And then the other, you know, it was kind of cool too because um, the next picture is of me sitting down and the Dybbuk box is below my feet. And I was in uh, what we referred to as the hell room. And it was weird because we'd see these, uh, a lot of the investigators and I would see these kind of uh, black kind of spider web things that would yeah. manifest out of nothing, um, like just out of the air. And they would, uh, they wouldn't, you know, it's like, almost like stars exploding or something. You would see them and they would just last for like a couple of seconds and then disappear. Um, yeah. So that's what this next picture of. And it's really cool because sometimes I don't really, I don't give you the best direction when I tell you, <laughs> when I tell you to, to if, I, if I see something and I ask you to sketch, I don't, and, and, yeah. and there's a reason for that because I don't yeah. want to, I want to see if you're able to pick up what and interpret right. it the way that I see it. And most of the time, I mean, like 90% of the time, you, you do it the right way. And yeah. like, you know, the next photo where John, Zaffis, and I were in the, the living room and, the you know, that thing was wrapping, yeah. the, the dark energy was wrapping around us. And what was yeah. really cool is the next picture is of the... Um, the demon and at the top of the stairs kicking the head down the bottom of the stairs now what's really cool is i didn't tell you what it looked like but uh, there were reports of in the before i owned the house people would break in there and they would see have dreams of this entity um in the you know five or six different people had dreams of this entity that would uh be in the house and would be at the top of the stairs and would kick a head down the stairs. And the one yeah. thing I didn't tell Kristen is that it had horns <laughs> and kind of like a, you know, a devil kind of shaped yeah. Um, oh, yeah, face, you know. So she was actually able to draw that. And I think it was somebody who drove by the house or something, took a picture of a window. Yeah. 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 Uh, one of your... Um 
I think she's a live sci-fi fan. Uh, I had driven by. Um, Diane is her name. Diane Coppola, I think is her name. And, and yeah, she uh, she sent me a message on Facebook. She was all freaked out because she had just seen a sketch uh, that I'd sent to you and you posted it. And, and uh, uh, I was floored when I saw it, too. And, and again, yeah. you know, awesome, but scary, you know, to see photographic evidence is, is really great to validate what I see in my head or what you you were seeing. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like the next one is of like when I was channeling doing the Ouija session, um, it wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done, but <laughs> I was doing it in the uh, in the main room there, and there were a bunch of figures that were um, kind of around me. It was kind of strange because I looked over in that same entity that people had later described to me, which is a validation for for myself too. The one on the stairs is yeah. was uh, playing like a pho an old school phonograph um, player a record with his fingernails. And what was really creepy about this is I didn't tell you all the figures that I saw, but it's yeah, pretty much it dead on with the people that I saw, you know, including the lady that has her head like up and that like, I don't know what you call it, like that girl, like ball thing on top of her head with the hair, yeah. <laughs> with the hair. And bun. Yeah, and a bun, yeah. thank you, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was really, you know, kind of cool that you were able to, to do that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. well, the test for me, too, because there are some things, you know, you've asked me to draw, and, um, you know, you'll give me kind of general description of, I kind of saw this, and just, you know, see if, see if you get anything. Try mm -hmm. to draw see if anything comes to you. And for me, it, it becomes almost like, you know, there's automatic writing, and, and for me, it's like automatic drawing. Like, once I, once I start, um, if I'm kind of concentrated enough and I've given myself, you know, enough time to just really be still for a moment, mm -hmm. it'll, just, it'll just come. Right. And um, so, yeah, it's really awesome when then I send it to you and you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, next week when we do the ritual... Uh, we're gonna do uh, this thing called one man hiding hide and seek. Uh, one one man hide and seek next week. It's just yeah. gonna involve placing a spirit or trying to place a spirit into a doll, and then we ask for it to come find us, whatever. So it's kind of a, a urban legend type of Japanese ritual that we're gonna try. A lot of people have had, some people have had success with it. We're gonna give it a shot, and so hopefully uh, maybe Kristen will be able to uh, sketch. The entity that's in, uh, might end up in the stall next week. I have my pencil ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kristen, where can people find you um, if they want to contact you? Uh, the easiest way to find me is uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a page called Supernatural Sketches, and that's where all of my supernatural sketches are. Um, and that's probably the easiest way for them to just uh, look it up and and send me a message if they have a question. What, what's, what do you, what's down the road for you? Like, what do you, are you, do you want to investigate more? Or what, what's, what's coming down do. the pipeline for you? I do. I, um, I'd like to definitely see, um, see what I could do more, add more locations, um, and test, really test my abilities and just see kind of how, how I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you, Kristen, for uh, for joining me tonight, and uh, I just want to say uh, thank you again for all your help, you know, in the past, and I look forward to uh, working with you more in the future. Me too. Thanks. Thanks. So uh, that concludes uh, the show for tonight. Um, I want to thank Kristen and everybody who watched, and please check out her website on Facebook, uh, Supernatural Sketches. And uh, we will see you guys next week for One Man Hide and Seek. Uh, with that being said, uh, thank you, Kristen. And we will see all you guys next week. Ciao. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.